And all of God's people said, amen. say amen again. Amen. One time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. You're kind of quiet this morning. Amen. Some of y'all must have got y'all's brackets busted yesterday or something. Amen. Y'all were louder yesterday when y'all was at the bar watching the game. Some of y'all can't say amen. You were louder when you was in your living room. Amen. Cheering for whoever you was cheering for. Now we here to cheer for Jesus and y'all done got mortuary quiet. Amen. If you would stand up, mortuary quiet. You do know that when there's not a funeral going on that the mortuary is very quiet. Amen. Go there in the middle of the day. They even whisper when they greet you. Hello. How you doing? Some of y'all behaving like that right now. Ain't no dead body in front of us. Amen. Ain't no floor arrangements up. There are no condolences being read. There is no hearse outside. But you ought to be able to praise God that somebody died last night, but it wasn't you. Hello, somebody. Somebody's making funeral arrangements, but it's not you. Amen. In the book of Mark, in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 8, Mark chapter 8, verse 36, Mark 8, verse 36, there you find these words recorded. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Let me read that one more time. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul. This morning, I want to preach from this thought, preach from this, 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 this truth. Is the profit margin worth it? Is the profit margin worth it? You may be seated in the sight of God. Is the profit margin worth it? Recently, we got the president's budget for the fiscal year. And in this budget, there were some things that should alarm the church. Can't say amen, you must not be reading. And you ought not be a believer and not know what's going on in society. For it is the word of God that gives us insight on how to deal with society. You do realize that this Sunday morning experience is not your everyday existence. That when the benediction is given, you must leave here and go out in society. And if you are not equipped to deal with society, society will whip the hell out of you. Maybe that didn't wake you up. Maybe that didn't wake you up. Let me help you out. If you are not ready to deal with the issues out there, the issues out there will kill you and we'll be having your funeral in here. And so we got to know what's going on. We got to know what's going on. And, 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 and there's some things in this budget that alarms us. And my question to the president, my question to America, my question to you is, is the profit margin worth it? Is it worth it that we're going to make millions and trillions of dollars? Is it worth it that we're going to be fiscally responsible? Is it worth it that we're going to do all of this on the backs of the least, the last, and the left house? Preach up in here, Davis. Is it, is it worth the fact that uh, we may have more money in our bank account, but our cousins down the street may be worse off than never before? Is it worth it that we're going to drive our Cadillacs, but they won't be able to afford a bus pass? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Because so many times we are so caught up on ourselves. We're so caught up on what's going on with us that we miss the fact that Jesus didn't come for the well. Jesus didn't come for the healthy, but Jesus came for the sick. And you see, we forget that we used to be sick. Uh, let me help you out. We forget that we sick now. We just ain't been diagnosed. Oh, um, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm almost through preaching already. I'm almost through preaching already. You do know the only difference between you and a sick person is a sick person has a diagnosis. 
Uh, you think I'm lying? You think I'm lying? Go to the doctor and stay there long enough. Uh, he will find something wrong with you. Uh, either you got high blood pressure. Uh, maybe you got a little bit of diabetes. Uh, he's going to find something wrong with you if you stay there long enough. And But by the grace of God, uh, what I have doesn't have me. Hey, you ever, you, ever, you ever go to the doctor perfectly feeling good? Let them do some blood work? <laughs> Let them check you over? Only for them to come back and say, how long have you been feeling this way? You look at the doctor and say, I'm feeling what way? I woke up this morning feeling fine. Went to my job feeling fine. And now you telling me I got three prescriptions I need filled? If you stay there long enough, he'll find something wrong. Is the profit margin worth it? Is the profit margin worth it? And so those of us whose image is not that we're sick ought to have a heart for those who are sick because we realize, but by the grace of God, there go I. Uh, come on, let me come back and get you. Uh, you remember everybody you used to kick it with, <laughs> you used to party with, uh, you used to do your sin with. Uh, they didn't all get out at the time you got out. Uh, some of them look 40 years older than you. Uh, some of them look broke, busted, and disgusted. Uh, some of them let the illness get to them. Uh, but here you are, uh, saved, sanctified, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, and the truth is, uh, I don't look like what I've been through. Uh, I got out in time, uh, and I had enough grace on me uh, that while I was in my sin, uh, the grace of God uh, kept me from letting my sin take me out of here. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't that I wasn't there. Uh, some of y'all can testify. It wasn't that you didn't smoke it. Uh, it wasn't that you didn't drink it. It wasn't that you didn't sleep with them. Uh, it wasn't that you wasn't there. Uh, but the grace of God is so good uh, that other folks got AIDS uh, and you walked out of there. Uh, the grace of God is so good uh, that other folk got, got this and got that, uh, but you walked out of there. Uh, God is so good uh, that God will put grace on you before you ask for grace. I mean, I mean, we come up in here and we come up in here and we act like we ain't never did nothing. Uh, we come up in here and we act like uh, we're all that in a bag of chips. Uh, when the reality is uh, you smoked a little reefer, uh, drunk a little drink. Uh, e and J may not have been your drink. Uh, maybe it was Jack Daniels. Uh, maybe it was little Hennessy. Uh, whatever your drink was, uh, you had one. Uh, maybe you wasn't a drinker. Uh, maybe you just slept with everybody. Uh, and all of us in here uh, can testify uh, that we had a crazy moment. Uh, is there anybody that'll testify? Uh, you had to hang up your whole shoes. Don't raise your hand, don't raise your hand, don't raise your hand up in here. Uh, don't raise your hand up in here. But all of us wasn't virgins when we got married. Uh, some of us had some whole shoes. Uh, Y'all know what them whole shoes are. Uh, that's what you put on uh, when you was about to go get in. Uh, you had to look good from your head down to your toes. Uh, so you had some whole shoes. Uh, but when you met the Lord uh, and the Lord worked on the inside of you, uh, you had to hang up your whole shoes. Uh, you had to put down your crack pipe. Uh, you had to put up your wine glass because uh, God wanted you. Reverend, I, I never, I never, I never had whole shoes. I never had whole shoes. I'm glad you, I'm glad you testified that you never had whole shoes. <laughs> but if you had sex before marriage, you was, you may not have had whole shoes, but you had whole tendencies. Uh, come on with me. Uh, everybody that wasn't a virgin when you got married uh, has some whole tendencies. Uh, what are whole tendencies? Uh, you gave it up before you were supposed to. Now, now y'all mad. I didn't say y'all. I was a hoe too. <laughs> I didn't say it was just y'all. Pastor had some hoe moments. Uh, hello, somebody. Uh, I had to hang up my whole shoes, uh, my whole shirt, uh, my whole slacks, uh, my whole jeans, uh, my whole flip-flops, uh, my whole socks. Uh, I had to hang up my whole alt. 
is the profit margin. <laughs> is it worth it? <laughs> Is it worth it that I come up in here acting like I'm all that when the reality is I know that if God would just blink one time, I'd die right here. Is the profit margin worth all that? That if God was to put my video on the screen, I'd put my head down and had to shake my own head at myself. But is there anybody that'll testify that the word says God to blot out my transgressions oh I feel good right there not white out but he'll blot out somebody can testify he blotted out 10 years <laughs> blotted out two relationships blotted out some crazy nights he'll blot out our transgressions here's the profit margin is it worth it? Is it, is it worth it? Is it, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Matthew 25, 35, he gives some issues. Jesus starts dealing with church folk. He starts dealing with church folk. He didn't deal with sinners. He's dealing with, with church folk. Listen to what he says to church folk. I'm only going to hit on three of them. I'm going to get up out of here. He says, when I was sick, you privatized Medicare. <laughs> You decrease VA benefits. When I was sick, you left millions uninsured so that the Medicare people, so that the, uh, the insurers could make millions. When I was sick, you took away my health care and allowed me to walk around here unprotected from common disease. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. He says, he says, he says, the church folks, the church folks, the church folks. When, when I was when I was sick, you closed down affordable health care. When I was sick, when I was sick, you didn't cover my pre-existing condition. Oh, I don't know about y'all, but how is it that Christian folk don't want to cover pre-existing conditions when the whole premise of grace deals with a pre-existing condition? Let me back up and get y'all. You do know that grace came down while you was already sick and grace covered your pre-existing condition. He says, he says, the church folk, he says, he says, when I was hungry, you cut free and reduced lunch. You cut free breakfast. When I was hungry, you cut meals on wheels. When I was hungry, you cut the food stamp program. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me, yet you sat down at your flush table and ate and never worried about me being hungry. He says, he says, he says, he says, when I was, when I was hungry, you ignored my growlings of my stomach because you didn't like the way it sounded and told me to come back when I had it all together. When I was hungry, you did not feed me. I only want to deal with those two because those two takes me to my third one. You do know that sick folk are un- Healed. They are not whole. You do know that hungry folk are not sane. They lose some of their logic when the hunger pains get too big. You do know sick folk, if driven to it, will steal to get their medicine. You do realize hungry folk, when hungry enough, will break in your house not to steal your money, but to steal some food. And it is these first two conditions that lead me to my third point, that when I was in prison, 
Why did you leave that for last, Davis? Because so many people in prison are nothing but a product of some sick and hungry homes. Y'all don't want to pray with me? I'll preach by myself. You do realize that if two broken folk have a child, the child going to be broken. And broken folk can't heal children. And broken folk perpetuate the brokenness. Uh, when, when, I was, when I was in prison, you cut after school programs. When, when, when I was in prison, you decreased funding for public schools. Not knowing that while I was in prison and you did those two things, you were sending more folks to prison with me. <laughs> While I was in prison, you didn't come, you didn't come to see me. You, you didn't write me no letters. You, you didn't stop by to say it's going to be all right. While I was in prison, you just, you just went on, you just went on about life. You just went on, went on minding your own, your own business. Is the profit margin, is it worth it? Is it worth it living in a big house if I got to keep buying more security? Is it, is it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it having a fine car, but I can't drive in certain neighborhoods? Is it worth it? Is it worth it having fine garments, but I'm scared to wear it on certain days? It, ladies, is it worth it to have all them rings, but you don't want to wear them? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it to accumulate all of this stuff and to lose your, lose your soul? Davis, what, what do you mean? What do you mean lose your soul? What do you mean lose your soul? I'm glad, I'm glad you asked. Jesus says, listen, whatever, whenever you ignored the sick, whenever you ignored the hungry, whenever you ignored the naked, whenever you ignored the prison, you ignored me. Jesus, we ain't never saw you in prison. We ain't never saw you yeah, hungry. We ain't never saw you naked. We ain't never saw you hungry. We ain't never saw you sick. They said, Jesus said, whatever you didn't do to the least of them, you didn't do to me. What, what you didn't understand that if you won't feed the hungry man that you see, you wouldn't feed me if I told you I was hungry. Quit trying to fool yourself. If you won't come love on me, you won't love on the man that you see every day. In fact, Jesus put it this way. You cannot love the father who you can't see and hate your brother that you see every day. You just a liar and the truth ain't in you. And the problem with the church, the problem with the rich folk, the problem with the government, the problem with the religious right is they want the profit, but is the profit margin worth it? Is it worth it to get to heaven and find out I don't qualify? Is it worth it? Is it, is it? is it? Is it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it to keep getting stuff, but never praise God for the stuff? Never praise the God of the stuff. Never praise the God that made the stuff, that sustained the stuff. And before you think your stuff is going with you, I've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. Not one time. When you die, your crazy kid's going to fight over your stuff. Preach up in here. Somebody else is going to sleep in your bed. Somebody else going to wear your dress. Wear your suit. Wear your shoes. Both the church shoes and the... worth it is it worth it that you're covered but you're sitting next to somebody who ain't covered we spend so time much time praising God for what he's doing in our life that we miss the fact God set us next to somebody that ain't having the same experience we have and we ain't asked them one time, do you know Jesus? 
Now y'all now y'all ain't got quiet. Nobody nobody wanna talk to me now. Nobody nobody won't nobody won't shout now. We spend so much time getting ready in the morning. When when we press stuff, boy, we be looking, be looking good, looking in the mirror, come to church, and we pass five folks that didn't look together, and not one time did we ask them, How you doing? Yeah, no, 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 no. We, we, so, we so hungry for the word. I'm going to get to the word. I'm going to get my good seat. I got to get for the word. got to get for the word. That we miss ministry on our way to get to the word. And the leisure said, I am the living word. <laughs> y'all, 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 y'all miss that. You do realize that the word is not just preached right here, but the word is lived out there. And you're so worried trying to get the preached word that you're not being the living word. And the world is looking for the living word to come to their neighborhood. Is the is is profit margin worth it? Uh, some years ago, I'll tell you a secret. Vic and I were approached by someone who had a thriving daycare center. They had fallen on some hard times, and they were looking to sell their business. And so we got together and looked over the proposal. They came to us and they had all the numbers, you know, how many, how many kids, how many, how many kids in the system you can take, how many non-system kids you can take, what the payroll would be, what the rent would be, and what the profit margin was going to be. They had all laid out there in black and white. I mean, we're looking at this and we're like, hey man, if, if we both keep our jobs, we can buy this and we can be living on easy street. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be rolling because this is going to bring us like a hundred thou every year. We can split that down the middle. You get fit, I get fit. Amen. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to cheat each other. We're going to split it. This is profit. This is on top of our jobs already. And, and, and then we talking and then the Lord led us to do some research. And in the research, the devil was in the details. There was some shadiness about the business. And the shadiness was starting to be uncovered. And here we were about to buy into a business, put our good names in something that all shade is all on. And so we decided not to buy it. We were talking to a third person who heard about this and said, y'all are some fools. Why didn't y'all buy the business? I hear the business is marketable. I hear it's profitable. Why didn't you buy it? We looked at the third person and said, the profit margin just wasn't worth it. I wish I had some people that understood that I don't mind getting stuff. But if I got to sell my soul, the profit margin, it costs too much. If I got to give up saying Jesus just to get some members, the profit margin, just isn't worth it. I'd rather lift up Jesus and have Jesus send in the least, the last, and the left out than to leave the cross out and God send us millionaires. Because without a cross, there is no Christ. Without a Christ, there is no salvation. Without salvation, there is no redemption. Without redemption, there is no glory. I'd rather have Jesus and folk think I'm crazy for worshiping him than to have them say how intellectually stimulating I am on my way to hell. I would rather folks say I hung out with the wrong folk than to say I hung out with aristocrats on my way to hell. I'd rather give them Jesus than to give them any kind of philosophy. It's not worth it. I'm 
closing, I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm done preaching. But when, when, was, when was the last time somebody called you a wine bibber? Let me, let me contemporize the text. When was the last time somebody called you a wino? Because you hanging around winos. See, nobody, 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 nobody can testify. Why? Because we don't hang out with them folks no more. Because, Reverend, I've been delivered. And I've been delivered from my drinking. And I shall not go back there again. And let me help you out with your good, saved, sanctified self. Since you won't go back there from where God found you. When you get to heaven, what you're going to find out, some of them folks back there are going to make it in. But they're not going to be accredited to your account. You're going to see all these rewards that could have had your name on them, but your name been scratched out because you would not go back Uh, Reverend, I, I, don't, I don't want nobody to talk about me. I don't, I don't, want, nobody, I don't, want, nobody, I don't want nobody to talk about me. I don't want nobody, I don't want nobody, I don't want nobody to talk about me, Reverend. I don't, I don't want, I mean, Reverend, you don't understand. You don't understand where I came from. But, but now that I've accumulated a, a couple of things, see, you guys know me as, as the principal. You guys know me as the principal. You guys know me in my, 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 my social circles. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm part of a fraternity or a sorority, and you know me as brother so-and-so. Um, you know me of all this madness. You know me of my social status. Um, but what you do not know is that Jesus did not save me in my social status. Uh, Jesus did not find me at a fraternity meeting. Huh. He did not find me at the Bouillon Club. Huh. Jesus did not find me at some social elite place. Huh. Is there anybody that will testify? Huh. Jesus found me huh, in the slum and in the middle of my sin. Huh. And I'm so glad that's where he found me. Because huh. the real me huh, is not the aristocrats you see today. Huh. The real me huh, is the one Jesus found in the slums and the ghetto. Huh. But he saved me. Huh. Is there anybody that thank God uh, for saving you uh, when you was at your least, uh, when you was at your left out, uh, when you was at that place uh, that nobody loved you, uh, nobody came to get you, uh, but the Lord uh, came where you were uh, and saved you uh, and how dare you uh, forget where you came from I was, I was I'm done, I'm done I'm trying to let this thing go, but the Lord just said, tell him one more thing. Tell him one more thing. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was getting my feet done <sighs> on, on, on Friday. I was, I was pampering myself. The family was all going. I was pampering myself. I was getting my feet done. And a lady was doing my feet, got into a conversation, and she was talking about her child, and then she started telling me about me. And she said, you're such a good principal, da 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 And she says, what did you teach? I said, I taught speech and debate. She said, oh, I bet you were a great student. I said, well, that, that not, that's not true. She said, I bet you were straight A's. I said, no, 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 no. I don't know what chemicals you're using, but don't, don't, don't lie on me. I mean, I don't know who else is listening to this conversation, but no, no, no. She said, what, what do you mean? I said, I, I was in speech therapy. She said, I stutter a little bit. I said, I stuttered a whole lot of bit. And she said, what do you mean? I said, I was in speech therapy for six Year. She said, six years. She said, what makes you stutter? I said, sometimes it's neurological, something in your brain. Sometimes you just think too fast. And she said, well, can it be healed? And I said, in fact, I know it can be healed because I got healed from it. She said, what do you mean? I said, I used to stutter. She said, well, how bad? I said, I stuttered real bad. She said, what did they do? I said, they put me in speech therapy every day. She said, was it outside of school? I said, no, no, no. It was in school. But I also had to go to summer school. She said, for real? She said, do you stutter now? I said, no. She said, isn't that something? You used to stutter, but now you don't, and you became a speech teacher. I said, ain't God good. God will take you where you're at. He'll save you where you're at, and then he'll send you back to the same folk that was at the place that he found you at so that you can tell him, come along, my friends, come along. Get aboard and ride this train. See, you think I should be ashamed at the fact that I stuttered. I am not ashamed at the fact that I used to stutter. In fact, I thank God that I stuttered. 
Because every Sunday that I get up here, I got to stand in God that the stuttering don't come back. It makes me dependent upon him that if God doesn't hold me, if God doesn't keep me, see, why are you trying to act like you ain't never been there? Somebody got a picture of you there, drinking hand, cigarette, marijuana, whatever you were smoking, in hand. Because when you was out there acting crazy, let's be honest, huh, you wasn't smart enough to say, don't get no evidence. Because I ain't going to always be. In fact, I tell college students every year, listen, get all of the incriminating evidence off your Facebook page. Because when an employer goes to hire you, we now do background checks. And we will go to your Facebook page to find out, am I hiring a fool or not? And if I see all this, and I see all this, I might not. Y'all want to deal with the truth, huh? Hmm. But when you've been saved, I ain't talking about when you join church. Now, you know what I'm talking about, when you get saved. You know ain't no incriminating evidence in your past. Because you'll stand up and tell everybody face for you, yeah, that was me. Guilty. But what you didn't see is when I came out the water. <laughs> that was me. Guilty. But what you didn't see is me and, me and Jesus wrestled that night. Uh, and I came out different uh, than that picture right there. See, you will only look at pictures of my past. Uh, but you don't see the picture of my future uh, when God presents me faultless. Uh, you just looking at my downfall. Uh, but you didn't see the video uh, of my coming up. Is it, is it worth it? We cannot sit here in this season and just pray for ourselves and our families. We have now have to broaden our prayer life that if the government ain't on your list, your prayer list is incomplete. If the president on, on your prayer list, then your list is, if the governor ain't on your prayer list, because you see, you can't just pray for folk on your team. The word says, pray for your enemy and those who despitefully use you. I got I to gotta have everybody on my prayer list. And then I got to realize that although I'm in a rigged system that is set up socially against me, I am also in a rigged spiritual system that is set up for my benefit. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed it. Let me back up and get y'all. Huh. Y'all understand that this government situation is set up to go against you. But this kingdom system is set up for your favor. I wish I had somebody that realizes the benefits of the kingdom. That if I work the kingdom principles, the kingdom principles will work for me. My God shall supply all of my need according to his richness and glory by Christ Jesus. That's a setup on my behalf. If I bring my tithes and my offerings into the storehouse, uh, he will open the doors of heaven uh, and pour out a blessing uh, that there won't be room enough to receive. Uh, that's a benefit on my behalf. And so it's set up for me to benefit. By his stripes, 
I'm healed. Set up for me to benefit. He'll keep my mind in perfect peace. Set up for my benefit. He'll make my enemies my footstools. Set up for my benefit. When I go to sleep at night, he'll put angels all around me. Set up for my benefit. He'll let grace and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Set up for my benefit. The more I think about the setup, the better I feel. That no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's a setup for my benefit. That when I pray in Jesus' name, it shall be established on earth as it is in heaven. It's a setup. For my benefit. And when my enemies are encamped around me, he will hide me in his pavilion. Set up for my benefit. He will exalt me in the presence of my enemies for his name's sake. Set up. See, here's the problem with the church. We don't know enough word to understand the set up. We know everything that's against us. The police is against us. The welfare system is against us. The job market is against us. We know everything that's against us, but we don't know but one thing for us. When I die, I'm going to go to heaven. Amen. Well, you be a fool and just, act, just access that one benefit. I'm going to access all the promises of God that is in the book that I qualify for. Go be depressed and go to heaven, and that's all you get. I'm going to be saying down here. Go and wait till you get to heaven and walk on the streets of gold. I'm going to have some gold down here. He said, I'm a lender and not a bar. Down here. He didn't say that in heaven. Down here. He said, I'll give you houses that you didn't build. Down here, not up there. I'll give you cities you didn't establish. Down here, not up there. If you don't want them benefits, that's okay. I will live in my house in Jesus' name. I will drive my car in Jesus' name. I'll wear my clothes in Jesus' name. And if you get jealous, I'm going to look at you and say, in Jesus' name, you qualify too. You just didn't want it. I'm not going to argue with a hater that's crazy. Because from a distance, I don't know which one of y'all is crazy. Y'all all look alike. Is it worth it to gain the riches of the world and to lose your soul? I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have the things Jesus wants for me. I'd rather have the things Jesus wants for me and to use them how he wants me to use them. I'd rather be a giver than a taker any day. I'd rather, y'all, I, mean, I, can't, I can't speak for y'all, but I'd rather operate according to him. As we stand all over this sanctuary, I know it's an awkward word, <laughs> 